Now, with evidence that climate change has played a significant role in the Los Angeles fires, new figures show that last year was the hottest year since records began. The EU's climate monitoring body, Copernicus, found temperatures were 1.6 degrees higher than the pre-industrial average. It said the Paris Agreement target of 1.5 degrees to avoid the worst effects of global heating was in danger of being permanently breached. Let's speak to climate scientist Ella Gilbert, who works in the Antarctic. Ella, I mean, looking at the pictures from Los Angeles and hearing this number, how worried are you? Yeah, I mean, the report you just showed was really heart-wrenching and it shows exactly what's at stake here and exactly what we're talking about. I mean, scientists like me are quite used to seeing the numbers and seeing the data, but it's quite rare that you get such a compelling and emotional uh, way to, to relate those numbers to what it actually means for people and their lives. The 1.5 degree target is what we would consider safe. Um, and we're currently, we've, we've seen the first calendar year where temperatures were on average across the world, one and a half degrees above our pre-industrial uh, limit. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that we've breached the Paris Agreement because that's a more multi-year average, but it means that we're well on the way to it. And actually, we're already seeing really devastating extreme events like the wildfires in LA, like the floods we saw in Valencia last year, like the, the changes that we're seeing in Antarctica. We had really, really low sea ice last year and the year before, and it demonstrates how comprehensively we are changing our climate for the worse. I suppose the last thing you want people to think when you when they hear 1.5 degrees has been exceeded is that it's all lost. It's all futile. This is just one year and the target was regarding, as you say, a 20 year average. But what could be done, say, in the next two years to really make a difference? Absolutely. And every single fraction of a degree of warming makes a difference and every little difference that we can make that reduces emissions makes a difference. It basically means that every every action that we can take, whether that's uh, urging governments to take stronger action to, to reduce uh, national or international carbon emissions, that matters, individual actions, all of those matter. And ultimately, it has to be coming from all different sectors of society. It has to come from governments, from organisations, from businesses, all of us, and every single fraction of a degree makes a difference towards that target. And it's really clear from the sorts of events that we've seen in LA or elsewhere last year that every single tenth of a degree makes a difference for the number of extreme events, the number of fatalities, the number of houses lost. All of these things matter, and there are tangible imp uh, actions that we can take we know what we need to do. We need to reduce emissions. We need to implement adaptation plans so that we know what to do in the response uh, to these sorts of events. It's, it's, we know what we need to do and it's just a matter of actually doing it. In five seconds, it's not too late then, Ella Gilbert. It's not too late. It's never too late to take action. Okay, thank you very much for your time, Ella Gilbert, uh, climate scientist.